This edition of the Impact Podcast is brought to you by ERI. ERI has a mission to protect people, the planet, and your privacy, and is the largest fully integrated IT and electronics asset disposition provider and cybersecurity-focused hardware destruction company in the United States, and maybe even the world. For more information on how ERI can help your business properly dispose of outdated electronic hardware devices, please visit eridirect.com. Welcome to another edition of the Impact Podcast. I'm John Shigarian, and I'm so excited to have with us today Nancy Gillis. She's the CEO of the Green Electronics Council. Welcome to the Impact Podcast, Nancy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm so excited to be here, and I'm so looking forward to our conversation. So am I. And before we get into all the important and impactful work you're doing at the Green Electronics Council, can you share a little bit of the Nancy Gillis journey and story? Sure, I I would love to because <laughs> um, I think it's an interesting one and one in which I hope many, both younger professionals and women professionals, consider and potentially follow. Great. And by that, I mean, I am in an organization, we'll talk about the Green Electronics Council, that focuses on the intersection of sustainability, of technology, and of supply chain. And mm-hmm. that's a really interesting and impactful intersection to be at. And I got there because as a young and myself, mm-hmm. and as many young people globally are now, I became interested in our earth. And I fell in love and what it offers of plants and animals Mm -hmm. and played in the backyard and appreciated that. So I was first and foremost a sustainability advocate. And then I don't want to date myself, (laughs) but I was still around when records were there and went (laughs) through the translation to CDs and um, iPods, so technology all of a sudden became something in which that's where my my music went. And mm. of course, um, I wanted to be a hip person, so I kept up with that. So not only was I appreciating the nature and the natural world, I was also appreciating the impact of technology. And then when I started to put those two together, I started to recognize that my appreciation of the world and technology we're meeting up and where technology does a lot of fundamental, fabulous things like this podcast, but it also continues to be the source of a lot of bad things, um, mm. environmental impacts that I didn't know about. And I started to learn about and social impacts, people working globally to make these great products happen. So I could listen to my music and a podcast or take classes and, That's where I hit that third area, which was looking at supply chain, because I can't have these products in a way to where they don't hurt people and planet without not looking at supply chain. So that's where I ended up. So I'm a person who got my education uh, in technology. Uh, I'm a technical weenie, Mm -hmm. but also in system modeling, which supply chains are systems. Uh, global systems, important systems. And I've put those two educational backgrounds together in a job that is a nonprofit where I get to be an advocate and Mm. actually uh, invest in my uh, love, first and foremost, of the planet and all the people on it. So that's a little bit about myself. That's wonderful. That is just wonderful. And, um, you know, uh, frankly speaking, and, 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 uh, I just wish we had more of uh, you in this world. The world would be a better and greener place. But that's why you're here today to share uh, your story and also the story of the Green Electronics Council. And for our listeners who want to find Nancy and the Green Electronics Council and her colleagues and all the great and important work they're doing, please go to www.greenelectronicscouncil.org. I'm on your site now. It's a wonderful site. There's lots of great information and important information here. Can you just start with what's the real mission? What's the baseline mission of the Green Electronics Council? Good question. So as I mentioned, kind of my own 
personal yeah. motivation and passion is yeah. sustainability, right? right? So it's right. making sure that the world continues to be both environmentally and socially as good as it can. And so the Green Electronics Council, that's kind of its mission as well. But it's also focused on a recognition of the value of technology. So what the Green Electronics Council tries to do is it tries to create a world of only sustainable technology. And there are other organizations that are trying to do the same thing. So the way that we do it is rather unique. We seek to harness the power of purchasing the stuff that we buy. Hmm. But it's not necessarily the power of individual purchases because there's so many of them. And we're a small nonprofit, so they're kind of hard to influence. We actually seek to influence institutional purchasers. Those are the purchasers either on the public side, so government folks at, at a national level, at a municipality, a city, or even private sector. So those big companies that we read about that are like trillion dollars in valuation, we try to get them to when they buy, to buy sustainable technology. Mm. And when they buy it, and these are individuals in their sourcing or procurement functions who by a stroke of a pen, one buying decision, buy thousands Mm. of technology, laptops, mobile phones, copiers, printers, monitors, televisions, you name it. And in influencing them and then buying so many and buying only sustainable versions of it, that's a big demand signal to all of those companies who make those products. So the Green Electronics uh, uh, Council, excuse me, simplistically, again, what we do is we seek to influence it, the institutional purchasers, those buyers, to buy credible, sustainable versions of all of these different technologies that they use to serve as a demand signal to influence the design and the supply chain behaviors of the major technology brands. And that's what we do. Got it. So... You're known for your eco label, the EP that you've created, the EP label. Can you explain to our listeners how that was created, why that was created, and how it actually, what it means in terms of, as you put it, institutional purchasing? Good question. So you are right. The Green Electronics Council and our support of institutional purchasers globally, we've Mm. got a number of tools and resources that we make available. And Mm. I'll think about it. You're a purchaser. You're either buying for, I don't know, the country Germany uh, or the country Canada. Right. And you have to buy 10,000 of laptops, right? Because you're disseminating them to all of those offices of your government throughout your country. And of course, those laptops need to do a number of things. One of those is be sustainable. So as you're looking at the fact of their size and how fast they are and how much memory they have and all these other things that the people who are going to use them want and need, then you also need to think about sustainability. So how can you think about sustainability as easily as possible without then having to know about what's the recycled content and whether or not it has hazardous materials and those You know, did children actually put these together? I mean, it could be very overwhelming. So as you mentioned, what we've created is an eco-label. It basically is this thing that you can ask for, EPEAT. And by saying, does your product meet EPEAT? You don't have to worry about calling out in your procurement. So when you buy these individual environmental and social requirements, All you have to say is EP, and what we've done is we've made sure that those individual requirements, the ones environmentally and socially, that a product needs to address. So anywhere in that product life cycle, so did conflict minerals, right, extraction phase, did conflict minerals come into play? Were these products manufactured and assembled in an environmentally and socially responsible way? Mm. Is this product built for energy efficiency when you use it, right? And increasingly, most importantly, when I'm done with this product, is it going to be able to be recycled? Can I repair it? Or is it just going to go to the trash heap? 
All of those things that you want those purchasers to care about under sustainability, we've wrapped them up really nicely in that eco-label EP. So all that purchaser has to do when they're buying 10,000 of those, be it a laptop or whatever other technology that EP covers, they just need to ask for EP and boom, they get these highly sustainable products. And although you've created this guidance and the, and the terminology EP for institutional purchasing, as you say, a country or a large organization that really can move the needle in sustainability. Is this something for our listeners who are just general consumers of electronics and other technologies also to be looking out for the EP label themselves? They can. And that's a great question. In fact, I bet some of your purchasers are saying, uh, you know, that are also listening to the podcast. Hey, I, I am a purchaser. And I've never heard of this EP. Right. How how impactful can this EP be? Right. Well, you know what? If they've never heard of us, that's okay. Um, we welcome them to come to, as you pointed out, our website. We actually mm-hmm. have a website that's www.ep.net. Oh. Where all the products who meet our criteria are on. So they can go there. But if they're going, hey, how successful? It's okay because, as I said, we actually haven't been targeting them. And here's, here's a, a benefit that they should feel comfortable about, hmm. which is when you've got those institutional purchasers actually carrying the water, making that EP requirement, and mm-hmm. all of these major dollar spends are requiring EP, then you've got the companies. And just some of the companies that participate in EP are ones such as Apple, Dell. HP, HPE, Asus, Acer. So Mm. a whole litany. That's just a sample of some of the brands. When those institutional purchasers are making those requirements, Mm. those brands are meeting them. That means they're making more credibly sustainable products. And now think about it. It's not as if those brands are going to say, you know what? I'm going to do a supply chain that's highly sustainable and pumps out these sustainable products. And then I'm going to build a whole nother supply chain and all the costs and stuff Mm -hmm. related to make non-sustainable products. Mm. Companies don't do that. Mm. So what's happening is the companies are pumping out these more sustainable products to Uh. meet the demand of the institutional purchasers. And the listeners to your podcast who are going out, it's high likelihood that they actually bought one of those EP sustainable products and didn't know it. Right. Because that's the impact of institutional purchasers. In fact, if one thing that your listeners can take away is an unsung hero in today's sustainability and climate change movement are purchasers. The people who go in every day, look at contracts, make purchasing decisions, and make the choice to put that power towards credible, sustainable products. I love it. Nancy, so it works. Explain to our listeners how it works. So if I'm a manufacturer, if I'm Apple or Dell or any of the other great and wonderful brands and iconic brands you just mentioned, and others, of course, want to get the EP label for the newest gadget I've just created, then I come to your organization and you put it through some sort of that rigorous testing and your algorithm to make sure that it hits the criteria to be labeled EP certified? Kind of. Okay. You're real close on that. Okay. Um, so you are right. If we've got a brand who says, hey, yeah. I want to be covered by EP. Mm-hmm. And EP is the leading global eco label for technology products. Wow. It's used by more purchasers than any other eco label. And right now it's used by purchasers in 42 countries. So you can well imagine why we are honored to actually have those iconic brands right. be part of the EP program. But it's not easy. So, and they'll be <laughs> ones to tell you that because <laughs> if you're meeting the needs of institutional purchasers and they're buying a whole bunch of these, I mean, just in 2019, um, there were more than four trillion dollars worth <sighs> of spend against EP. I'm telling you, 
Unsung oh. heroes are those purchasers. They're putting a <laughs> lot of power behind this. And so let's just say there is a brand and they say, okay, I want my products in this category. And again, EP covers things such as laptops and tablets and mobile phones, televisions, printers, multifunctional copier devices, even servers, right? For those data centers that are so important now to our connectivity, things such as that. So we cover most of the technology that's currently in what we would consider our home or external office environment. And if a brand wants to get it covered, they need to come to us and they need to first signal. And then what we do is, of course, we show them the criteria that their products need to meet. Mm. Now, we're a unique label in that we're not just required, required criteria. So it's not just, oh, I meet it and I meet it. No, no, no. We're one that likes innovation and technology. You know I talk about? I'm passionate about technology. Technology right. is awesome. And we want more, better technology. But we also want that more, better technology to be increasingly more sustainable. So uh, for EP, the criteria are required. You don't meet the required. You're never going to be considered EP. But we also have optional criteria. Uh, so a brand can come in and say, okay, I've met the, I've met the rather high required. That was tough <laughs> enough. But you know what? I'm committed to sustainability because I, too, am a brand in, in the technology sector. So my employees and my customers, I know they care about sustainability. So I've chosen to have my products meet optional criteria. And it's purely a choice. And these then are criteria that really make sure that that product continues to be sustainable on the environmental and social front. And the more optional these products meet, the more that product is considered either a silver or the highest level gold. So EP is an eco label where you can buy EP products. EP products at the silver level, EP products at the gold level. And if you're at the gold, it means that that company has actually invested maximum amount to make sure that their products are sustainable, that they're personally invested in that. And they're invested in making sure that those products, that innovation is happening, just not for usability, like the camera is better, or the sound is better, or the RAM is bigger, so the battery lasts the longest but also that it's as innovative as possible for the benefit of people and planet. And so that's a little bit about it. So you've got a, a brand who comes to us, they pick the criteria, optional ones, again, has to meet the required or else we won't even talk to them. Right. And then you would think, so do we assess it? No, 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 no. Because we help develop the criteria. It would be a little bit <laughs> conflict if, we also said, oh, yes, you meet it. So, no, we send them out to major certification firms. Uh, these are firms that, again, maybe some of your listeners are aware of, but these are the big, been in business for 100 years, certifying other aspects of technology. So, firms such as Underwriter Laboratories, if you look at a lot of your products, those are the guys who make sure that the technology is safe. That when you plug it in, your hair doesn't stand on end. It's those types. <laughs> it's underwriter laboratories, companies, to Rhineland. So we even have international firms. Um, and again, these being firms who they're actually the ones who work with the brand and check those criteria and make sure that those products meet our criteria. And once those firms say, yep, we checked it, this product actually is, then we put it on that website that I talked to you about, the www.ep.net. Right. And then it's an EP product. And then all those big institutional purchasers, the ones who spent about $4 trillion <laughs> last year on EP, that's when they can go ahead and feel comfortable uh, about buying it. I love it. For our listeners who just joined us, we've got Nancy Gillis. She's the CEO of the Green Electronics Council with us today. To find Nancy and her colleagues and all the important work that they're doing at the Green Electronics Council, please go to www.greenelectronicscouncil.org. Or, as Nancy said earlier, to learn about all the products that are EP certified, go to www.ep.net. E-P- E-P-E-A-T dot net. Nancy, we're living through this strange and tragic 
COVID-19 period that's hit not only us in Portland and Fresno and the United States, but everyone around the world right now. And work at home has now become normalized, which means people have left their offices where they have their desktops and all their, let's just call it legacy electronics sitting in their office and their desks, hopefully one day to return to in some way, shape or form. But now they've had to also outfit their homes to be connected vis-a-vis -vis Zoom and emails and text messages. So there is now a boom in the electronics industry. What's your take in terms of the technological boom that we're living through partially due to this COVID-19 pandemic and all the electronics that are coming out of it and its interrelationship with the future of sustainability and the ecosystem of our planet. Wow. If that's your closing question, I thought you were just going to ask me, so <laughs> what's your thought about sustainability? But you've just wrapped future and planet and COVID well, all together. We could, I don't want to get but... Yeah, you're, I, up. I, I an you're, up. you're up for it. And we don't have to eat the elephant in one bite. You can just go bite by bite. And we can walk through it together. Let me hear you. Let me hear because I know, you know, you know, I know you have a take on this and I really am interested in that. I know our listeners would be as well. I do. And I appreciate you allowing me to tease you and, and yeah. to do so in such a way that doesn't minimize the fact that we are at a time that I even tell my own staff uh, is unprecedented. And, and it seems like such a small world, excuse me, small word for mm. where we find ourselves in this world. Mm. Um, it doesn't do justice to the tremendous upheaval and change and cost of life that we're living through because of COVID. And one of the things that we really see with this almost immediate move towards working from home has been that. You know, we started this conversation and I said, hey, consumers, individuals, consumers, if they don't know EP, that's OK, because we've been targeting institutional purchasers. Well, guess what? With everybody working now from home, those individuals, consumers, they've become institutional purchasers because they are buying products mm -hmm. to be able to work from home. They are buying technology products on behalf of the need to work for their companies. And so that kind of has made them institutional purchasers. And with so much reliance on that technology, there's a, big, a tremendous increase in the demand for connectivity, hmm. for networks to work. Um, we find ourselves also because we're at home, and sadly, this is not a good thing, it becomes a little challenging to separate. Right? We no longer close our office drawer, pick up uh, our satchel, right, and go down to the parking lot and either get in our car or wait for the bus. We don't do that anymore. We hopefully get up from the couch and mm. walk out of our bedroom then into our <laughs> kitchen. Right. And because that separation isn't there anymore, we find ourselves actually maybe staying a little bit longer on the computer and, and maybe using it a bit more and just getting in that, uh, that that next email. So suffice it to say, this tremendous move has really caused more people to buy more technology. In mm. fact, there are waiting lists for mm. certain type of laptops and so forth because everybody needed them all at the same time. <laughs> it's kind of like toilet paper, right? It's really hard to get <laughs> and you really need it. But that usage and the inability for us to, to use what we've done before to separate from work has meant that there is so much more draw on the energy. Mm. There's so much more draw on those products. There's so much more buying of those products. So people who, yes, you are end consumers and actually our eco-label EP wasn't one that we were targeting. You've now become institutional purchasers. And I need your listeners to recognize their power now as well. I need your listeners to recognize that now, when they have a choice, they should be actively seeking credible, sustainable 
technology products. And they can do that through, of course, EP. Mm -hmm. And we're proud to say that actually Amazon, which is where a lot of people go, especially in North America, but also uh, overseas to find technology products, that Amazon is featuring EP products as part of their climate pledge. So you can go on Amazon and you can find EP products. That's awesome. You could also go find products such as Energy Star, which is another eco label that's been out there even longer than EP. And EP actually has Energy Star in it. So when you're buying an EP product, you're already getting an Energy Star product. But what I'd like to say is that for all of us now who are constrained, first and foremost, protect yourselves. And of course, do stay home. Do try to socially distance. Do be wearing your mask. If I may say that on your show, but but do be doing that. We are a science-driven organization. We believe in science, and that's what the best science is telling us. But also, as you're working from home, if, if you're one of those who are lucky, we are lucky if we're able to continue to work and have it be from home. Now is your time. If you care about this earth, if you care about this planet, if you have children that are driving you mad, but you still care enough about them to keep this planet for them, buy credible, sustainable products. Buy those laptops, those TVs, those tablets that you're putting in your children's hands so they can continue to be educated. Buy those things and look for EP. That's what I would ask. Nancy, that's that's a wonderful way to close today's show. I just want you to know you're always welcome back on the impact to share all the great things you're working on at the Green Electronics Council. For our listeners, again, to find Nancy and her colleagues at the Green Electronics Council, please go to www.greenelectronicscouncil.org or to find the EP certified electronics to purchase, please go to www.ep.net. Nancy Gillis, you're an inspiration. You're making an, a huge impact. You're making the world a better and greener place. I'm grateful, and thank you for being with us today on the Impact Podcast. Thank you so much for this opportunity, and be safe and be well to you and to all who's listened. 